Located in the northwest of the Ariake Prefecture, there is a camp nestled just on the edge of the Golden Forest. Making his way into the camp itself, our protagonist, Jin, finds the camp filled with refugees and survivors displaced from the Mongolian invasion. Curiously, he can also find a paper note set down on a wooden stump next to one of the camp's fireplaces. The note itself reads, Toku, I hope you somehow find this. It was so chaotic when the Mongols came. I felt you grip my wrist and then nothing. I searched and searched, but you were gone. I believe you're still alive and that I'll see you again. Father is taking us to Kuta Farm to search for safe passage off Tsushima. If you read this, hurry to us as fast as you can. This note doesn't lead to what would be considered a typical side quest in Ghost of Tsushima. There is no additional waypoint marked on screen, no notification in the pause menu. There isn't even guidance from the wind. All that Jin has to go on is that whoever left this message was going to a farm named Kuta. If the map of Tsushima is still clouded in fog, finding this farm might prove difficult at first. None of the obvious settlements bear its name, but there is one notable region known as the Kuta Grasslands directly south of the survivor camp. Peering in that direction, there seems to be a visible building in the distance and a large patch of pampas grass just beyond it. With nothing else, this is as good as a lead as any. As Jin makes his way in that direction, let's talk about what makes this note and the quest it belongs to so hidden. Not only is this not a marked side quest, Usually when Jin picks up artifacts or records through his travels, those items have a place in the collections tab of the pause menu. However, this note can't be found in either the records or Mongolian selections. In actuality, this message is recognized as a key item or an item of special significance. And it is simply titled, A Family's Escape. Jin is someone who was born and raised into being a samurai and was taught to protect this island and its people, specifically those who could not defend themselves. He may feel more than motivated to follow this thread through. Perhaps he had hoped that this family found the safety they were looking for, something that many families on Tsushima were after, himself and his uncle included. Maybe he felt the urge to lend his assistance if possible. Supposedly, there was safe passage off the island, but with an entire Mongolian fleet just off its shores, Jin might have found it hard to believe that such an attempt was even possible to make, let alone safe. And yet, if he could help this family seek refuge from danger, he would do so without missing a beat. Regardless of the reasoning, we travel southward along the coast to follow this story. and we stumble upon the Kuta farmstead itself. Depending on which act of the game Jin is in, this farm might be occupied by Mongolian forces, and he will have to liberate it from its captors if so. Once the coast is clear, we find that despite a few burned wagons and some of the houses being torn and broken into, for the most part, the farm and its inhabitants have been spared for now at least. So what other clue was there for Jin to find? After searching every corner of the farm and finding nothing pertaining to the family, there was but one last place to look. The watchtower. Climbing up, we find it. Right beside the lookout, there's another note. Toku. I hope your trip here was far easier than ours. Father is taking us to a grove of trees beyond the pampas grass we saw from the lookout tower. Once we make it to the cliffs, we'll find a way down. There's a boat waiting for us there, but it will leave if we're not quick enough. Please, Toku. Hurry. The family made it this far. 
What's more, the father of this family somehow secured passage on a boat to leave Tsushima entirely. Was he an experienced sailor? Did he have friends or acquaintances with the right know-how? Perhaps these questions don't matter. What does matter is that the family might still need help. Standing where the father once stood, Jin gazes over the horizon, looking for a grove of trees beyond the pampas grass. There. We're on the trail once again. As we travel further south, there is still this worry for the entire family, Toku included. With these notes being left as they were, we could speculate that Toku never arrived to pick up these messages in the first place. With how chaotic and frantic attacks have been from the invaders, families and friends being separated must have been incredibly common. Confusion abound, if Toku found refuge in another camp, they were at the very least safe, but how would they know where to even begin looking for their family? All the more reason for Jin to follow these breadcrumbs. Maybe through sheer willpower and a little luck, he could reunite them once again. Reaching the cliffs, Jin comes across a grisly sight. Blood soaks the dirt as bodies lay half buried off to the side, flies swarming around them. There's a woman holding a shovel with an arrow in her back just a few meters away from what we could consider to be a mass grave. Who killed these people? Could this be the family? Lying beside them, another note. Toku. We found a way down the cliffs. It's a dangerous climb, but it seems safer than the waterfall. The boat is meant to come tonight. You have to make it. Father says there won't be another chance. We don't want to leave without you, but we can't stay. I hope you understand. How recent was this note written? How recent were these people slain? Perhaps whatever foul event befell who was here just nearly missed the family. Maybe there was still time after all. A waterfall, they said, so a waterfall it is. As we look over the edge of the cliff, there's a waterfall indeed. Now so close to the family, Jin rides in that direction, passing by another body on the way. A bad omen to be sure, but he can't stop now. Sure enough, there is a noticeable path along the rocks leading downward. We're getting closer. The beach is just a few paces away when we find them. Surveying what looks to be a tiny camp, there are two bodies by the campfire. There's a woman, seemingly attacked from behind, alongside a man who's impaled into the rocks. Just over that rock, there's another woman her blood marking the cliffside as her body lays still below. There's no message here, no further indication that this is the family we've been looking for, but glancing over to the beach, there looks to be something else. Making his way down the rocks, Jin finds a sashimono banner, perched just above bags and packages of supplies, and there, on those supplies, we find one more note. Toku, I hope there's no need for this note, and soon I'll see you come down the beach yourself. There's not much time left before the boat arrives, but I'll stall it as long as I can. If you do read this, I'm so sorry. Please stay safe until we can return after the Mongols are gone. And that is the end of this quest. There were no other notes. No continuation of what happened to the family. We, and Jin, only have this beach, some baskets of supplies, and the three bodies we found up above as a conclusion. With no possible way to identify them, we only have to speculate. The presence of the Sashimono banner is important. Not only could this flag have been used as a sign 
for the supposed boat to see and sail toward, and may also denote the status of the father. These banners, as described by the game, are small flags worn by common soldiers and samurai alike. They allow soldiers to see their allies on the battlefield at a glance. Was the father one such soldier, or even samurai? More than a few samurai survived or flat out avoided the initial invasion of Tsushima. Did the father have connections or intel of how to escape the island if its defense became untenable? Reading from notes prior, the haste with which the father pressed forward even without his child Toku insisted that he may have wanted to save what little family he could. And what of the note? Why was it placed on the beach and not by the campfire? What caused the family to make a makeshift camp on the cliffside in the first place? The urgency of the notes insisted that a boat was going to leave them behind if they weren't fast enough. And yet, here they were with enough time to spare for a bed and a fire. They kept a majority of their belongings on the beach, but chose not to sleep there, presumably because of the tide, what with all the seaweed strewn about. The position of the supplies just by the edge of the cliff implies that one of the women sat there, potentially keeping watch for the boat while the others rested. So did the boat leave without them? Was there even a boat at all? The impaled man could very well have been the father, but who were the two women? One of them was assuredly the writer of the messages, who we can now assume to be a daughter of the father, but who was the other? There are two potential identities for this woman. She is perhaps the mother of the family, someone who was not written about in the messages. And yet, this woman might also be Toku. If my internet research has been sufficient enough, and if what my peers have told me rings true, then Toku is a unisex name. No mention of there being a mother at all might imply that this small family unit only consisted of one father and two daughters. From this knowledge, we could assume the absolute worst. The father and daughter, or the writer, both arrived at the beach that night. As the daughter wrote a note for her sister, the two anxiously waited for the boat's arrival. Unfortunately for them, no boat came. They chose to stay overnight, built a campfire, and left a majority of their supplies closest to the beach, just in case the boat did arrive. And yet, presumably while they slept, attackers arrived. But if it was any consolation, Toku did follow the trail that her sister left behind in much the same way that Jin did now. The presence of only two pillows by the campfire could be a clue that the father and the writer were alone on their journey. The way in which the notes were set down might actually give us reason to believe that Toku did read them, following her family's footsteps. The position of the note on the watchtower, for instance. Toku could have carried the note up to the tower to look for that grove of trees. And in the end, the family was reunited. If only for a little bit. I hope you find peace. After finding the fourth and final note from this family, it causes all four notes to disappear from the key items tab. Jin gains a small amount of legend, as if the notes were just that, a small wayward quest line. He can, of course, also claim whatever supplies and other notable items may have been found along the way, such as the Pillar of Honor, or liberating Kuta Farmstead if the Mongols occupied it. Oh, we'll get through this. But much like the wind itself, this quest goes just as quickly as it arrives. If anything, this thread of messages is another reminder that the invasion was brutal, and that life for many of the survivors was fragile and fleeting. After all, if the last possible chance for escape was going to slip through your fingers, would your urge to take it override staying behind to look for lost family? <laughs>